Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here is your special host, the Senior Technical Advisor for Keating Dental Arts, Brandon Fetters. Hey everybody, Brandon here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. Our guest this week is a graduate from the Howard University in Washington, D.C. She completed her postgraduate residency at the University of Medicine and Dental in New Jersey. She leads the Teach Me Dental movement, which is redefining how the public understands and treats their dental health. And she has also been featured in O, the Oprah magazine, as a leading woman in Baltimore. With over 20 years of experience, she has been able to provide her patients with the highest quality of general, restorative, and cosmetic oral health. Currently practicing from Marriott'sville, Maryland, please welcome Dr. Hazel Glasper, DDS. How's it going, Dr. Glasper? How are you doing? It's been a while. We've been trying to put this together for about a week and a half. I'm so excited. (laughs) Awesome. I really appreciate you (laughs) taking the time to be on the show with us today. Thank you for your patience. Oh, not a problem at all. (laughs) I know how it can get, you know, it gets hectic. You never know when you have an emergency patient walk in or what what may happen. Yes. Well, that's the beautiful thing about having a a busy practice. That's a good point. (laughs) So, so Dr. Glasper, what is it that uh, actually moved you to pursue a career in dentistry? You know, that's kind of funny. It's a funny story, but I've shared it quite a few times over the last couple of years. It really was a chance conversation with an individual that opened my eyes to dentistry. Hmm. You know, I came from a family where we didn't really understand or didn't really go to the dentist on a regular basis, and oral health was not a huge issue or conversation in my family. As a matter of fact, I think I was probably in my family, uh, most of the members of my family, we probably held on to a toothbrush for about six, eight months, Mm -hmm. you know, and now they're saying three months. So we, you know, we didn't, we didn't know a, a lot about oral health, but I went to Spelman College. Are you familiar with Spelman College? Uh, personally, I'm not. Can you tell us okay, more? Okay, Spelman uh, College is one of the top African American or historically Black colleges in the country, mm-hmm. and a lot of very dynamic women went there. I was going to become a pediatrician, and I was at lunch one day with one of my classmates, who happened to be like number one in the class. And I thought we were having a conversation about where we're going to medical school when she shared with me she was going to dental school. And it floored me because I didn't think someone so brilliant would go to dental school. You know, I thought it was something that was lesser than at the time, unfortunately. Gotcha. And so just the fact that this very brilliant woman was going to dental school and I had so much respect for her, it made me realize that maybe dentistry was bigger and greater than most people realized, than I realized. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that, that does make sense. Where did you end up going for, uh, for dental school afterward? I went to Howard's Dental School in Washington, D.C. Nice. Nice. And then uh, when you were coming out of school, did you did you start off as an associate or did you practice your own practice? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I was an associate in various practices and each and every experience was, you know, it's a podcast within itself. It was uh, sometimes extremely challenging to work with a lot of the men that I work for. They were extremely demanding. And um, so they were the best of opportunities. I learned a lot and they were the worst of opportunities because um, I learned that people can can sometimes not not be so nice or kind Mm -hmm. to an associate. So but um, after I finished every one of those associateships, I came uh, out a stronger person and a more enlightened person. So in one, I learned how to manage and understand insurances. And that's huge, Yeah, you know, to really uh, appreciate what role insurances should, um, should hold or 
have in your office. Another opportunity, I became a business person uh, because I work for this gentleman who had six locations. Mm -hmm. And then the other opportunity, you know, I learned how to collect and treatment plan. So even though they were very difficult situations at the time, they be they became valuable experiences for me in my career. Oh, I bet. It sounds like you got quite a bit of experience in dealing with different personalities during that time, too, I would imagine. Yes, and you have to learn that because you're going to have different personalities coming in as patients or mm. team members. <laughs> so very true. Now, when, uh, <laughs> when, when did you, because you went in and started your own practice, uh, did you have certain marketing strategies, mailers, social media? Did, what type of strategy do you, did you use to help your practice grow? So when I started my own practice in 1990, 1999, around 2000, mm -hmm. I was the only dentist in this rural area of Howard County. And uh, so it was pretty much farmland. And really, it wasn't built up at all, but it, it, it was it was successful from the minute I opened up the practice. So I did a lot of community. Uh, I was involved in the community, getting to know people, building relationships. Word of mouth was big for me. Mm -hmm. I didn't do a lot of external marketing at the time when I first opened up my practice. So I did a lot of relationship building. Gotcha. Sounds like you, you picked a good area that was in high need of, of a good dentist <laughs> from the sounds of it. Yeah, it, it was. And it was not a very diverse area. So I'm an African-American woman. It was predominantly uh, a white area. And I was truly embraced as I expected to be. But uh, many people wondered why I would pick uh, this area, and, and and it turned out to be the best decision possible for me. Well, that's awesome, though. Don't don't let fear ever hold you back and just go for it full bore. That's that's really cool. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you live by that creed. Oh, big time. <laughs> <laughs> And um, with the mm -hmm. with all the technologies and advan advancements in dental, um, what are your feelings on impression scanners, CAD CAM, you know, so on and so forth? Do you have any thoughts or feelings upon those? I do. Um, in my practice, I pretty much function like a prosthodontist, even though I'm really I, I consider myself a comprehensive dentist. I've studied with quite a few few of the. Uh, cosmetic and restorative gurus out there, but uh, the the technology that that fits well in a comprehensive practice um, and that I'm drawn to are like the intraoral imaging and mm -hmm. the uh, scanners and the d digital radiography and digital pans and lasers. And so stuff Technology like that has really fit in a practice like mine. Uh, I don't make my own restorations. I, I haven't gotten to the point where I've incorporated that technology, but I, I know a lot of people who do, and it's, they're very successful, and they're able to create restorations with excellent occlusal morphology and um, and marginal integrity. So uh, probably will be the next direction I go in. But right now I send my cases out and they, they come back. They're beautiful. So Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, coming from the lab aspect, we appreciate you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> well, I believe in you, and I believe that uh, definitely you're trained in a way that I am not. And um, or you know, we we did a lot of waxing up when we were in dental school, and mm -hmm. definitely we do some waxing up in the office now. But to the level that you know, I want my crowns to have the translucency and 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 just the the natural look yes that sometimes only 
a skilled lab tech can deliver. So I believe in, you know, using high quality labs. I hear you. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of those things that I've found to be rather true is a lot of times they'll run into these patients and they want these stark white, you know, where someone with a trained eye sees it from across the room. We could tell it's fake. It's like, uh, I don't know. Most of us in the field, right. we, we want to see what looks like a vital tooth coming out. So that's that's good. exactly exactly. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And so, so you know, not uh, th- there is great technology in dentistry. I mean, we have come such a long way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are some things I just prefer to kind of do old school. <laughs> I hear you. And that's working with labs. Excellent. You know, with kind of uh, unlike most dentists that we see out there, you took kind of a different route with the uh, the oral systemic connection side of dentistry. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Yeah, well, first I want to say, you know, it. It kind of bothers me and puzzles me a little bit for for me to be distinguished in that way because the oral and systemic link is, you know, we're doctors. Mm-hmm. And I consider myself a medical doctor. I consider myself a physician of the oral cavity. There's no other doctor that in, in medicine that is doing what we do. We're experts in this area. So whatever happens in the mouth is definitely having a or a, a systemic manifestation and vice versa so you know we need every dentist to be able to recognize that truly over 90% of systemic diseases show up in the mouth and so we need to know what those diseases look like we mm-hmm. need to be able to recognize them educate our patients on uh, what's happening systemically. The mouth is the gateway to the body. You see a patient come in that is dealing with obesity, poor nutrition. That's something that we need to counsel them on because, you know, nutrition starts in the mouth. Mm -hmm. So for me, it it was a natural fit. It made sense. And I think it makes sense for each and every dentist. Um, another thing, I've seen so many patients as well as family members sick and dying because of the condition that their mouth is in. And who better than um, a doctor of dental surgery or dental medicine to educate them about that? But we can't educate them about it unless we understand the science behind it as well. So um, I would have never become a dentist if it was just about filling teeth or drilling teeth. Yeah. It had to be about something greater than that. Uh, that makes and sense. And I guess that's what I felt when I was talking to my classmate. I knew she wouldn't go into it if it was, you know, just some mechanical thing. Yeah. But yeah. this is big. Certainly more of an <laughs> eye opening thing and a much broader picture when you put it like that. Would you would you say that this helped to guide you into becoming a comprehensive dentist? I think I wouldn't have ever become a dentist if I didn't have a vision for comprehensive dentistry. Mm -hmm. And I kind of redefined or look at comprehensive dentistry in in a different way than maybe other dentists look at it. I think a lot of us call ourselves comprehensive dentists, but I'm one of the uh, pioneers, I believe, in redefining what it looks like. I believe a comprehensive dentist fully understands that uh, we are physicians of the oral cavity. We do have a responsibility to for, um, to uh, understand and treat with regard for overall health. And so that's a huge part of being a comprehensive dentist. I believe that we're clinicians, engineers, and artists, that we need to deal with each and every patient with a consideration of health function and aesthetics. And there are very few professions out there that are able to restore all three of those for each and every one of our patients. I believe as a comprehensive dentist, we have an obligation to fully diagnose and treatment plan each patient and and inform them of all of their oral health care needs. I believe that we should collaborate with their with their other physicians 
for the mutual benefit of our mutu- uh, of our patients. So if they're talking, dealing with the endocrinologist and they have uncontrolled diabetes, it's our responsibility to work with that endocrinologist. And it, it elevates us. People stop looking at us as just, you know, dentists or tooth doctors and really look at us as the physicians we are. I also believe that a comprehensive dentist is a business person. Mm -hmm. So they understand how to run their practice, business-minded. Yeah. And so it's really, (laughs) that's what a comprehensive dentist is. (laughs) Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, And how how you mentioned about kind of pioneering with that, or not kind of, just pioneering, quite frankly, in in that regard. Do you think as we move forward that medical and dental are going to merge together more closely? They have to. Mm Mm-hmm. They have to because uh, that's where dentistry and medicine is going. People are recognizing now the research is there. Yeah. For many years, uh, dental research was lagging behind other medical research. And so now they're they're making the connection between poor oral health and, and, and babies being born too early or too small, um, strokes, heart attacks, pulmonary problems, cancers, memory issues, and osteoporosis, and all these other um, diseases and conditions that were never mentioned before. They're being connected now. So when, when you practice, truly practice, as a comprehensive dentist who who are looking at all those factors that I mentioned, what I have found is that you'll enjoy dentistry much more. Like, I love what I do. I get to practice the dentistry of my dreams. I get to improve the quality of my patients' lives and save lives. And on top of that, I get to be one of the top producers and collectors in dentistry. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to have um, high volume in my practice. I don't have to see 15 patients a day. I can see six quality patients who, who appreciate the dentistry that I do. And so comprehensive dentistry will, will, if you want to have or stay in private practice if you don't want to have to join a DSO, if you don't want to have to compromise your care, if you don't want to have to have uh, excessive stress and and um, and be at the uh, demand of your patients as giving them the authority as the doctor and they're dictating tre- treatment then become a comprehensive dentist, a true comprehensive dentist, understanding and establishing your authority to that patient and your team Mm -hmm. and having a clear vision and purpose so that everyone is functioning on the same page. It's wonderful. Awesome. That's excellent. Not enough dentists practice in this way. We would have less stress. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, Now, would you be able to share on how you can take a passive patient experience and turn it into an active experience with today's technologies? I think you develop a co-partnership, do some co-diagnosing with your patients, and you do that by some of the the tools that I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. I love the intraoral camera. I love digital photography. It's different. You can tell a patient something all day long, but when they can see it for themselves, then they have to own it and take accountability for it. And you cannot unsee something. True. And so with the impression scanners, you can kind of show them where you are today and where you could be if you follow this treatment plan recommendation. So that's how you, you, you take a passive patient who maybe has come from another practice, maybe was not educated in the way that you plan to educate them, or you've been taught to educate them, 
or a patient who feels like it's just about teeth, no big deal, pull it. And you fully, you know, connect them to how important this system is, mm -hmm. that it's involved in, in eating and tasting and, and speech and all these things that you need to, to have a high quality of life. And you show them how missing teeth or malaligned teeth or uh, TMJ issues or decay is affecting their lives, then, you know, they, it becomes a different conversation. You develop trust mm -hmm. with the patient. You develop a relationship with them. Now, now when it comes to this, let me see here. Can you share with our listeners what is Teach Me Dental and what the plans are to move forward in 2020? So Teach Me Dental was a brainchild that me and my team came up with when I decided that I wanted, wanted to be a speaker and a coach in dentistry. Mm -hmm. And I decided that if I wanted to talk about redefining what it meant to be a comprehensive dentist, that one of the issues that dentists would have is that, well, patients won't understand that and they won't accept it. So I decided that I was going to educate the public as well. Nice. So I started doing events all across Maryland and I started doing radio and television and, and writing and it just became such a conversation that Teach Me Dental was able to educate millions of people and it became more of an, you know, national movement or campaign. So uh, Teach Me Dental right now is about educating. We educate individuals who work in nursing homes. As a matter of fact, right before I contacted you, I read an email for someone who heard me speak in front of maybe about 10, 10 directors and team members of long-term health care facilities. Mm -hmm. And she, and this was three years ago, and she said that she was so moved by it that they want me to work with them now doing, uh, to do a collection of videos. Oh to help educate individuals at those facilities. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, it's incredible what it's done. You know, I've been on docu-series. I've, you know, I have uh, been in front of the House of Delegates and and the Senate. I helped get a um, $10 million pilot program started for uh, adults on Medicaid for them to have more comprehensive dental care. So it's it's been a wonderful, wonderful um, project. In 2020, mm -hmm. we're going to give our third conference, Bridging the Gap Between the Dental and Medical co Community. We've given two conferences already. And I want to start a program where I'm taking young dentists teaching them comprehensive dentistry on the underserved population. Gotcha. So then it becomes a win-win. Yeah, certainly. Mm -hmm. Well, no doubt with all those experience, it, it has to do a lot with your, your vibe and really commanding an audience. I'm sure you have that impact on them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank when it, you. With, uh, with our new, new dentists that are coming into the field, do you have any, any tips or suggestions you'd have that you'd be willing to share with us? One, um, contact me. <laughs> I'm giving workshops. I'm starting, I'm having my first workshop. Let mm -hmm. me say that. Uh, I've decided to give my workshop with some very brilliant consultants and coaches in, in dentistry and working with some phenomenal companies like Weave, Patient News, Care Credit. Mm -hmm. My first workshop will be with the Sisters in Dentistry, which is an African-American group of female dentists. And so, uh, and it's going to be here in D.C., so I'm very excited about it. We're going to talk about uh, treatment planning and 
patient retention and production and collection and how to treatment plan. So for the young dentists, I would love to do some mentoring with them, coaching with them. It's a lot of phenomenal coaches out there. I would love to get into the dental schools and help more before they get out Mm -hmm. into the world and start practicing to help change their mindset around dentistry a bit, their importance in medicine. So as they come out into the world, I want them to know that uh, the opportunities now are greater than they have ever been before, that you can not only be an incredibly successful dentist, but you can change many lives. I know that many are coming out with a great deal of debt, and I believe that practicing in a comprehensive manner is going to be the thing that is going to get them out of debt the quickest than to do a lot of drill and fill limited care. Well, that's, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> that's excellent. It, uh, would it be okay with you if we put your contact information down in the uh, show notes? Yes, absolutely. Do I give it or do you give it? Oh, we'll, we'll go ahead and get that and then uh, we'll get okay. it on the show notes there. So people can click the hyperlink and get in touch. It'll be pretty well done. Yes. So, well, Dr. Glasper, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. It's been awesome having you on the show. Very mind opening and, and just a beautiful approach. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Hi. Thank you for contacting me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and thank you for your patience. Oh, you got it. And we'll be in touch. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Up Podcast Show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Up Podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.